Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing and uh, joining our team here. Um, so, this video here, we're going to get back on that little cutie. <laughs> Terribly abused. Seven point five Johnny. We're gonna save that little motor. Come in here, just a salty, abused block of salt. Think it was more salt than it was outboard. But uh, we got her unstuck. We honed her up. We gave her a bath, a shower. We soaked her up, lathered her up, scrubbed her up. But when I was taking that lower unit off of there I did some owies I did some owies to it I can fix some owies we'll fix them I'll show you what I do there um, the lower units on both of them in order to swap them out they came off pretty hard, so, uh, but I got them out. We got them all uh, ready to go back together. Uh, but first, I got to pull off that water pump housing. We got to look at that impella and see if I have another one or at least see if this one's in good enough shape that we can at least run the motor. And I'll point out some things along that, uh, along getting these little seven and a halfs that are salty like that apart, how you can repair them if you ding them up a little. And that's where we're going to start today, but you never know what's going to show up at this little shop. But before we get started, i got to give a couple shout outs. Jonathan Shemrod, he has a 19 and 75, 70 horsepower. He is from the beautiful state, Washington State. And I have been there many times. Some of the prettiest country you'll ever see down there. So, yeah, and them, uh, them 70 horsepowers, uh, 1975, 70 horsepower. People around here routinely still, commercial people around here still routinely run those motors. Um, I have a really good friend. Um, I help him out with parts and stuff on his. He runs, he runs twin 75s. And uh, he's like, you know, I've wanted to, I've thought about getting rid of the old 70s and, uh, you know, putting a pair of four strokes back there. He goes, but I just can't justify it. He goes, I can pick these 70s up around here, parts motors wise, for next to nothing. And he goes there. And so what he does is he keeps two or three of them rebuilt, sitting in his garage, ready to go. And he, he's a big... Um, salmon trolling guy that's that's his thing he likes to go out and troll for salmon and most of the time he's alone and so he likes the security of having twins back there and he's learned how to rebuild them over the years he's been building them for over 30 years so he he can just about rebuild one at lunchtime so he keeps two or three of them that he builds through the winter in his garage and um, if he has a problem during the summer he don't even he don't even look at what the problem is he just swaps them out keeps going because we have a short boating season here and that way he's into his trolling all summer long when the weather turns yucky he'll get on the one that had a problem figure it out rebuild it whatever it needs and take care of it so I totally understand about them 70s good motors then uh, Paulus Meetanen I hope I'm saying that right Paulus Meetanen his favorite motor is the Suzuki DT25. That would be just about like the uh, mystery motor there, very similar to that. Um, so um, I understand that. I'm running a Suzuki DT40 on my Bay Runner skiff right now. So I totally get them Suzuki's well built, good two stroke motors. And uh, he is from. Finland! He's over from Finland! So, um, I want to say a big shout out to him over there in the beautiful country of Finland. So, 
thank you guys for chiming in. And I say now we get back on this little 7.5 cutie. See if we can't get this thing all taken care of. I'll be back. So you're going to drill a few little holes like that. Something for the, uh, I can't drill one here because that solid piece, but that'll be enough. And you see these three holes. Let me get set up for the braze. Okay, you want to so look something like that. I got a piece of flat metal that's about an eighth inch, eighth inch thick. And I got it on there with one of them old cheesy cheap C-clamps. Then I'm going to heat the aluminum. And what you're after is to heat the aluminum. Don't heat the, uh, you're not targeting the steel. You're targeting the aluminum. So I'm going to heat up above these holes and around. And then I'll braze that in. I'll be back. Now we're going to let that cool. Which is going to take a bit. So after it cools down, I'll be back to break that metal off and show you. That should be cool enough. There's the piece of metal I used. So that's that one. Now I got this one to go. So I'll reset up like that and I'll be back. to get more rod. Now we let that cool. Oh! I'm sorry I don't have the number on these, but I'll get it for you. If you notice, on here I wrote new generation aluminum rods. Um, this stuff's come a long way actually. Um, I tried the earlier ones and, and they just didn't go on well. Um, but this new stuff, and I'll get you the number, it, uh, it works pretty good actually. You can fill in some pretty big dings with it and you can also, I've welded transom clamps. I've even used it on heads and it works pretty good. Um, I don't know. Yeah. There we go. This torch I'm using, you can use a map gas torch or even propane if you're doing thin stuff. Now this torch I have, I bought this thing years ago and I don't remember where I got it from, but you could probably get this at like uh, Granger or whatever and if you see it says turbo torch and I've got it hooked to this little bitty I don't know how much propane that thing holds but that little bitty propane set up there with my little turbo torch and this thing works pretty good it gets pretty agum hot so um, I don't know who made them when they made them I've had this one for a lot of years, so, but it works good for this kind of thing. Like I said, you could use the old propane right there, map gas for sure, and do the same repair. So, I'll let that cool, and I'll come back and we'll do some grinding on it, clean it up. Be back. Hey, I'm using one of these fairing type discs, you know, because we're just dealing with aluminum here.
Now, if you were going for any kind of real perfection here, you could just mix you up a little bit of JB Quick Weld. If you got any little pits or anything, like I got a little ding there, a little pit there, and just put some of that in there. Like I said, I'm not, on this motor, we certainly ain't going for perfection. We're just going to make it look good, you know, good enough. That's all you would need to do there. Put your little quick weld. This is the quick type, which just means it has more hardener in it. Let that hard, we'll sand that off. Ivory bisque. Matches that original Johnson pretty good. About three coats. Ought to do it. Okay, I'm going to let that set there and slather soap for a few and we'll be back. Glad we looked at that, huh? Got some spruce needles up in there. But, let me bring you over. Huh. Let's look, let's look.
can you see? We got chunks. Every one of the fins is pretty much broke. So, let's see if it'll come up. Yay! There's my little pin. Don't lose my little pin. Okay, so we're missing chunklets. Not a very good impeller, I'd say. I don't even think that would the pump Dave with ya. So, we gotta look up in here now. Full of spruce needles. I don't see no, no more chunks in there, but I'll blow it out with compressed air and clean it up good. Cup looks all right, really. They use a lot of goop on this one. Yeah, they did. A little rusty. I'll clean that up a little bit. But let me go see if I can find an impeller if I have one. Okay, went and got me a brand new impeller out of my stock. I got the pin Vaseline to the shaft. Let's see if I can get it to line up. Probably have to get a screwdriver. I might be able to use. Might be able to use a knife, a knife. Maybe not. Okay. I gotta get this this pin's a little rusty. There it goes. But it went. Okay. She good. <laughs> Spray a little soap on there. And in the cup. that on there like so and give it a twist get my bolts which all four of them are the same length Cross some action there. Let me go one more time on this. All right, there we go. So I put a little Vaseline to hold that key. A little petroleum jelly. To hold that key in place. That helps a little bit. So let me get set up and we'll stab this thing. I don't know if you could see it, but on the top there, in and around all that anti-seize is an o-ring so i almost forgot to put it there don't forget to put your o-ring you're supposed to have your o-ring now according to this i'm in neutral i can spin the prop around and my drive shaft don't spin either direction so i'm in neutral that should line up my shift rod for me and then i'll put the engine in neutral so it's in neutral 
And let's see what we get. Who can do this? Who can do it? Okay, what I had to do with this one was I had to start this front bolt goes up in here and get some tension on this thing so it was kind of pulling the front down then I come around here and, and put this back bolt in did the same with it and then the power head was real tight and I just turned it and boop I felt it I felt the splines go up in there so it's probably pretty dirty in there but now I'm in neutral there you can see that's a neutral there's reverse neutral and forward so now I do is put the three bolts in that's all I got to do I put a little never sees on them the little never sees in them holes That other one out just a little so I can get this one started. There. So I move. Okay, what I'm doing here, I don't know if you've seen these before, you buy them at bike shops and motorcycle shops, they're for cables, throttle cables, brake cables, in this case I'm using it on this shift cable. Okay, put that all the way in, and this has a place you can put it, like so, and then you screw this knob and that cinches it up around the cable there's a rubber thing inside here and then you've got a couple places you can you take some kind of lubricant this is called cable life motorcycles snowmobiles watercraft bicycles watercraft it's outboard to me then you've got holes in a couple places Stick it in there and it supposedly forces it down the cable. Looks like most of it comes out around the edges to me. Um, I don't know if that hole is supposed to be just a vent, but I'm going to squirt some in there too. There's one down here. I'll squirt some in there too. Okay, let that sit for a minute or two, see if some of it runs down. This cable ain't super stiff, but it, I think it's tighter than it should be. And like I said, you got to remember this engine was salty and abused. They ought to make laws. So let's screw this guy off. There we go. Hopefully some of that will work its way down in there. I could probably take the helix off of here too and see if it's got any grease. It probably don't. But I'm going to loosen the starter, pull it forward, go ahead and hook up the fuel pump, carburetor and all that. I'll be right back.
couldn't run it with the bonnet on there. Because look at this bonnet. This is what the whole engine looked like when it came in. Full of dead spiders. Cobwebs. So I got to clean this guy out. Mold. And the whole engine looked like this. Spider webs. I should probably just go ahead and rip this foam, but I think I'll paint it. But it's not sticking very well. But that's the way the whole motor looked when it came in, as you remember. Everything was covered with salt. So I'll have to clean that whole thing inside and out. Maybe another creepy crawly will come out of there. There's been about five of them come out of here. What gonna try get me? That's right. Come out! Come out! Big old nasty crawlies. Boy, look at that. Look at that super clean just eat that stuff up now I do like this this soap but I'm gonna have to find some other way of uh, presenting it because uh, I'm not much of a spokesperson I don't think Well now, it started raining outside and uh, at first it was just a little mist and fog. Then the wind picked up and started raining so I thought, well, it's getting a little late anyway so I think I'm going to wrap it up on this little 7.5 right here. Still got to get this old sticky throttle cable off here. I might have to pull the flywheel, take the stator off and clean things under there to get it to smoothly operate. But also, I also think I got something going on in this tiller handle set up because I can see the little nipples aren't even lined up. So I need to pull this apart. So we got a little bit to do yet. And I got the hood to it out there soaking with a little soap on it and uh we'll get that all scrubbed up and looking good and uh but she's coming along we ain't gonna let her go to the trash heap too good a little outboard for that so that's gonna be a wrap and you know that's one more hack from kodiak thanks for watching Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.